Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Scott Sheba from the Nike Town Running Club. We're going to learn all about Scott and we're going to touch upon the controversy that's occurring now at the Nike Town Running Club. Welcome, Scott. Hey, Will. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Scott, let's get started before we hit Nike Town. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you born, for example, and something about your childhood? Yeah, so I grew up in Orange County, California, south of Los Angeles, yeah, for those that haven't seen the, uh, the TV show. <laughs> Which TV show is that? It's called The O.C. It's a kid who has nowhere to go. But in The O.C., nothing is as it seems. Welcome to the dark side. Without everyone's like, oh, you're from The O.C. Like, uh, sure, Orange County, yes. As a child, with you athletically in Oh, involved? yeah, yeah. So as, as a kid, I played, I played baseball up, up until I was about 16 or 17. Uh, and then I, I wasn't really involved in any sports for, for a long time. I was in marching band in high school. But it wasn't, uh, I, was never, I would never have considered myself very athletic after I stopped playing baseball or active. Which high school? Let's give a high school a plug. Buena Park High School, the Coyotes. That's actually where my dad went to high school, too. So oh, keep cool. it in the family. <laughs> cool. This is in California, so the weather must be fabulous. It was it was great. Uh, it, you know, compared to New York City, especially, uh, we don't we don't you don't you, you kind of just get that like nice sp late spring, early summer weather most of the time. But it does get cold at night though. That that's the one thing. It's crazy. You know, here in New York City, when it's like super hot, it's like hot all week, and it's just like there's no relief. In California, it'll be like. 100 degrees during the day, but then it always drops down like cooler, and you always kind of need a sweatshirt on standby. Oh, okay. <laughs> After high school, did you go off to college? Uh, yeah, I did a, I did a local, local college, a state school, Cal State Fullerton. Okay, and what, what was your major? I majored in theater. Ooh, nice. <laughs> now, what's involved in theater? Um, well, in my end, I was on the technical side of things, so like the lighting, the set design, costumes, a little makeup, and... Uh, but, you know, you study a lot of the plays, and you, st you still have to do a lot of the history of theater and all of that, the, you know, reading a lot of Shakespeare and uh, a lot of Ibsen and stuff like that. Like, just like the actors would have to do, the okay. technical people have to do that, too. Okay. Yeah. You would have behind the scenes. Yeah. The, being on this side of the camera is actually is a little... Oh. <laughs> it's not my world. I've got to be on the other side, right. you know. Now, was you athletically involved in uh, college? Um, so, in college is when I started getting into, into running a little bit more. Okay. So my my wife, who was my, my girlfriend at the time, um, started, said she wanted to train for the LA Marathon. She saw, one of those people that saw it on TV and was like, oh, I, I wanna do that. I mean, so she started training for the LA Marathon and I thought she was crazy, of course. Like, all non-runners think all runners are crazy, right? right? So I thought she was crazy. I thought that was a crazy distance to run, but I wanted to be supportive, so I, I said, well, I'll run a, I'll run a 5K. I'll, I'll go try it out. She was going to, as part of her training program, you know, they, they put in like, oh, you're gonna run a 5K, you're gonna run a 10K. So she was actually going to run this, uh, this 10K. And I said, okay, well, I gotta drive you there. Well, I'll run the 5K, I'll run the 10K, it'll be fun. And uh, we were actually, we were running late that day. We, we showed up, I was just gonna sign up on the day of the race, and the race would started right when we showed up, the 5K. And they were like, you can't, you can't register, it's, it's already started. And I was, <laughs> so I was like, well, uh, I guess I can do the 10K. Uh, oh, I, I see. I, I, might, I might as well. I, I can run the three miles, and maybe I'll just walk if I get tired. Okay, so you did it together? Marathon. Yeah. Well, so no. I said, you, you go. And she was, you know, this was before we said, you know, now we, we run together a lot in races. Oh, okay. But this was before she... Oh, okay, uh, so that was your first experience doing a race, the 10K. Yeah. Well, did you enjoy the experience? I, I, I surprisingly, I surprisingly did. So, you know, the advantage of having, I think if I had, if I had just done a 5K, maybe I would never have gotten into this. I don't know. Hmm. But having done the 10K, it, it made me think. I thought, well, I didn't, uh, I didn't die. Maybe I could do a half marathon. It's not that much farther, right? Okay. This wasn't like the worst thing in the world. I think they, they really thought I was going to like call them at mile five and be like, can you come pick me up, please? I'm dying. But, uh, but I didn't. And so, okay. so then I, I signed up for the, what was it called? Then the Pacific Shoreline half marathon, which is now the Surf City USA series. Oh, name Surf USA. Yeah, you Surf like City. This, I, and I haven't done it since they've changed the name to Surf City. Now you, well, I, it was just like some, you know, a normal race medal back then, but now it's like a surfboard with like a way, it's like a wooden, like polished surfboard now. It's pretty cool. cool. For those people that are like super into the, the medals. That you yeah, right just, a lot of runners are. Yeah. I mean, they sign up specifically, what's the medal like? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. So you did the half and Obviously, you enjoyed it too. Actually, that, that first half marathon, I was 
I was kind of injured and I probably shouldn't have run and it was actually really painful for me. But I and uh, but you know I, I actually at the expo. This is so. This is how I actually got into more running, right? Longer distances at the expo for the half marathon. You know they always have the specials, right? If you the, all the marathons from California are there, they have their expo people and the San Francisco, uh, sorry San Diego, San Diego rock and roll. It's like you know they have the expo specials and it's like. It's kind of like the same thing if you go to the county fair and they're like trying to sell you the potato, the potato twirler thing. They kind of talk you into it, right? Right, right. <laughs> like this is going to be great. Right. So, so what did they talk you into? They talked me into signing up for the San Diego Marathon. Oh. And uh, so I had already signed up for it as I was towing the start line for, the, for, for my first half marathon. <laughs> I already gotten myself into a, so I was already digging the hole deeper before I was even. But at least you got your $5 discount or whatever I it did. was. I did. Yeah, I got like 5% or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Save 10 bucks or something. You got a, you got a, a, a train, a in-training t-shirt or something, okay. right? I'm sure, yeah. Okay. But you mentioned you were overweight at, at some point in your life. Was that up at that point? Yeah. So like at that point, I had started losing weight because I had started running. But, you know, uh, at, toward the end of high school and going into college, I was, I was actually like 190, 195 at my heaviest, which wow. is about 40 to 45 pounds heavier than I am now. Because I think that people should know that you can, you can start doing this at any age and any weight. And okay. it's not necessarily just about weight loss. Right. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think that I started running because I wanted to lose weight. Right. I just started running because I wanted to be supportive and right. kind of worked out. All right, so the pounds melted away. You did your first half. Yeah. Now you're training for the San Diego Marathon. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you want it with your, with your girlfriend at the time? Or? Yeah, we did run together for that, uh, that marathon, and it was probably a better experience for me than it was for her, because I'm sure she, she, she dragged me to the finish line. I think, I think I got to, you know, you get to mile 19 or 20, and I was just like, I was like, I'm done. I'm oh, just going okay. to walk. You go. Uh, like, okay. I'm, I'm sure it was actually more dramatic than that, right? Okay, like, she was supportive. Leave me behind. Save yourself. <laughs> but uh, no, but I finished. It was about, you know, five hours or something. Oh, okay. And uh, now you guys obviously made it to New York at some point. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so in 2008, um, Lucy got accepted. Lucy is her name. We can just call her Lu by her name now. Uh, yeah, she got accepted to uh, to Columbia Grad School for for nutrition, and uh, wow, I wasn't prestigious. Gonna, yeah, I know. I wasn't gonna let her go. So I, I said, well, I mean, not not I wasn't gonna let her go, but I wasn't gonna you know see her go away. And so uh -huh. I said, all right, I got to find a job out in New York City. So I, I did. I started. I got a job working off Broadway doing sound for a theater show and. Uh, well, make a good use of that theater degree. Exactly, exactly. Make a use of theater degree. I started doing audio for a musical off Broadway, and it's funny. It's I got this job last minute, and they said we need you in two weeks. I got here at the end of August, and she didn't get here till the middle of September. Okay. So I, what came out of her moving here for school ended up being me moving here first, and then her. Moving oh, okay. <laughs> but obviously, you needed to find a running venue. Yeah. So how did that happen? Yeah, we were looking for jobs, or she was looking for jobs because I had one, and she, she found a posting on Craigslist that they were looking for. For pacers for the Nike running company and she said well they said you have to have run a marathon before and you have to be able to run three miles or something right there and she said okay I'll go interview I'll go see if they you know if they'll hire me and and they did early 2009 okay so who was the uh, the coach Is that coach Kane or coach Kenley yeah I think at that time coach I'm gonna get like crucified if I don't get it wrong, right? But uh, I think, I want to say it was that the Coach Kane was involved at the time. I, th I think that that was toward the tail end of when he was oh, okay, because there was a well. transition period. There was. So I'm not sure who the head coach was at that time. This is where we met Ken Lee. This is where we met a lot of the people that are, you know, still in the club right, now. Right, right. And, uh, but Terrence, I know who you... Oh, Coach T, with. right? Yeah, he was there as well. There's a lot of people that oh, okay, were... Okay, that was a transitional around. area because those guys left and then Coach Ken Lee yeah. took over and, and he did a fabulous job for the three yeah, or four years yeah. she was there. We love Kenley and we certainly miss her not being here. You know, I'm, I'm happy for her. She's now married and in, you know, North Carolina, but I, uh, but yeah, we, we miss her. She's a great friend of ours. Oh, so. everybody misses her. Yeah. <laughs> she was a great pacer because uh, she would pace us. Yeah. Yeah. She was, a, she was, a, I was in her group and uh, it's great to have her. Even when she thought she made a mistake, we all loved her for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, and she's, uh, she's, turn. she's one of those people that's super solid on pace, right? Like she does, once she starts running, you're like, okay, we're gonna run 9.30, it's locked in, you're not changing. So you, you hope you can keep up because she's gonna keep running 9.30. It's all great. right. There's another change that's occurring in Nike Town yeah. that's making the uh, social media. I don't know if it's made the local press yet, but uh, we'll see. At some point, you, maybe it was your wife that started it, went into ultra marathons. 
Yes. Uh, before we moved out here in New York City, we had started getting into triathlon a little bit. This is actually how it starts. We started getting into triathlon a little bit more, actually. And, and I kind of made the offhanded goal that I wanted to do an Ironman. And we kind of, kind of came up with like this ridiculous list of like things I want to do in like ultra endurance. I wanted to do an Ironman, and I said I wanted to, I wanted to run a 50 miler before I was 50. Of course, <laughs> of course, I was like 20, 26 or 27 at the time. So it's, like, it's kind of a, I said, I'm going to give myself a little, uh, give myself a little time. You know, we had talked about it. We took a little bit of a break from running when we came here, and then, you know, she started pacing. And we got back into it and uh, did the San Francisco Marathon, I guess, in 2009. Okay, so I went back to California to visit. Yeah, funny thing, never went to San Francisco the whole time I was living in Southern California. <laughs> Moved to New York City, went there, like, the very next year. <laughs> it happens. And then we, the Knickerbocker 60K is, you know, New York, I guess now it's called the New York City 60K. But people know it as a Knickerbocker yeah, exactly. 60K. People I don't know, know why they changed it, but. I, I don't either. But now, anyway, you know, people know the Knickerbocker. Right. So we said, well, that's a great opportunity to get, you know, we want to do an ultra, that's a great opportunity. And so we, we did it. and Right after the New York City Marathon. So you're already. Yeah, that year we did. Up. We did run the New York City Marathon. A lot of people did. In, in 2011, I think, we did do that, run the New York City Marathon and then run the 60K. Okay. But the first year we did it was 2010. We, we really loved it. They have chips, you know, it's great. What kind of chips? Like potato chips, ruffle, oh, ruffle oh, chips. Oh, food. Yeah, <laughs> food. That's why we do ultras. It's just for the snacks, Well, It's not a... Uh, well, it's what is it, about six loops of the park or something? It's not. So you do the, the for those that are familiar, you do the, in, the four mile loop from 72nd Street Transverse to the 103rd Street Transverse and a little out and back. But you do that from 72nd to 103rd loop nine times. Oh my gosh. Well, the good news is the crew is there to help you with the chips yeah. and everything else. And we actually had a friend who did, uh, I think, maybe five or six loops with us, actually. She was just looking to do a long training run, so she ended up joining us for some of it. it was yeah, yeah. Anybody could jump in and run a loop or whatever the they can. The park is always open. That's right. That's right. That's the moral of the story. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Well, are there any other good stories about all other long-distance runs that you did or didn't do uh, well, or so wanted the, to do? The shirt that I'm wearing here, this is kind of like a... Ooh. This is the Great New York 100-mile race, and this is a, an event that's put on by, by Phil McCarthy, uh, who's a pretty well-known ultra runner here in New York City. Uh, and this is the belt buckle that you get for completing the race there. Nice. Uh, from, this is from, that's from this year's race. This is from the previous year's race. So we did the 100-miler the this year. Who knew New York has a 100-miler race? Yeah, it's, it's pretty low-key. If you're kind of in the ultra running community in New York City, you, you probably have heard of it. It's just a third year, so it's not... That new. It's I mean, getting bigger, yeah. I for know. sure it's getting bigger Every and more year. popular. Yeah, I think there were 50-something people that finished this year. And uh, it's an amazing tour of New York City. You know, I, it's one of my, it's still, of all the races that I've run across the country, it's one of my favorites because you, you start in Times Square, you run up to the Bronx, you're, you're out in Orchard Beach, and you, you started at 5 a.m. So you're, you're at the beach, you know, at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. There's nobody there. And then you run down into Astoria, you run all the way out to, to Bayside, Queens, and you're running through Flushing Meadow when people are playing salsa music and barbecuing and playing in the park. And you run all the way down to Rockaway Beach and the sun is setting behind you. And you run from Rockaway to Coney Island. I think we were, we were in Coney Island around midnight. We didn't know that the Mermaid Parade was the same day as the race, right? And we're just like, is this what Coney Island is like on a Saturday night? Like, maybe we should come check out this party. Like, because it was just like trash. There was just like papers and cups everywhere. <laughs> Interesting. You yeah. would think they were cleaned up very Well, they were in the process of cleaning oh. it up at that time, but it was just like, well, I don't know what they're cleaning up from, but this, oh. must, be, this, must, get, this must get crazy at night. Oh. Now, what kind of landmarks? I mean, how did you know where to go? Did you get a map? Did you there, yeah, there's, there's some directions in the course. The course has some markings that are, they do with chalk markings on the ground that, you know, Phil and his team tirelessly go out and, and put these markings out for us to follow. Um, and, and there's also, yeah, there's a, there's a sheet with directions that kind of tells you where to turn. But you, you definitely have to look out for it. It's, it's a navigational adventure as much as yeah, running Yeah, it's, it's like the great race kind of thing, you know, because yeah. you've got to hit your marks. Yeah. And I guess they have aid stations. Every six miles, there's a volunteer aid station, which, you know, a lot of them are pretty minimal with just water and Gatorade. But, you know, a lot of these people, they just, out of the goodness of their own hearts, bring chips, my favorite. For you, it's and, chips. And pizza, <laughs> and, they, and candy, and soup. You know, in, in Sheep's Head Bay, somebody has a stove. Actually, I should shout out to, to Jess Woods and her team out there. They have soup and a tent and a chair to sit down in and drink soup. It was, it was great. It's great. I could point you to the next way. What got us really hooked on ultras is, is the fact that it's this kind of laid-back, 
this party atmosphere. It, it, it's like a family atmosphere almost, and it's just people are out there to have a good time. Yeah, you know? yep, yep. We're not so, trying to qualify for Boston. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Georgia Jewel was my first uh, 100 miler. Uh, what was your time on that? That one was probably like 35 hours. Oh, okay. It was a really tough mountain race, and, uh, and it rained for about 12 hours. Now, race. where is it? This is in Georgia, in Dalton is the name of the city. The race started at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, and five or ten minutes before the race started, it started downpouring torrentially, and it really, really rained pretty hard for about the first eight to t eight or ten hours of the race, mm -hmm. and to the point where some of the rivers that we were supposed to cross to get to aid stations were flooded. We had to go extra miles around the rivers. It was uh, extra it was, miles. Yeah, you, you don't know, get any bonus points. For I think that, it was yeah. 108 miles by the time we were done with it. But you, you know, you take it in stride, I guess. Okay, and, and uh, did everybody get to finish medal like that, or you have to meet certain criteria? Everyone who finishes under the cutoff got got this belt buckle. Okay. Some races you get a, a special buckle for finishing under 24 hours. Okay. Or you get a normal one for finishing over 24 okay. hours. But uh, all right. And then but this one was my second one, Havelina. There is an, an actual animal called the javelina. It's like a little pig kind of boar thing. Wow. Yeah. And it's spelled with a J, it looks like, right? It's spelled with a J, yeah. And where is it? It's in Arizona, yeah, in the desert. Oh, wow. You get to travel into these, uh, these long I, distance runs. Yeah. It's and did your I, wife join you? She did. So we ran that one together as well. Oh, yeah, excellent. So it, it, was, it was a fun time. It, we, I love traveling to these races. I love seeing the different, the different scenery that all these races have to offer. And, you know, the desert is incredible because you see the sun rise and you see the sun set. And then you're still running and you see it rise again. <laughs> Unless you're really fast and then you don't. But. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Long distance, you're supposed to go very slow. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not, it's not, that's not a problem for me. You were telling me another great story. You were going to do something on back of my feet. It sort of tells the story how resilient runners are. Yeah, yes. Last year, about this, about this time, actually, uh, my wife, again, she was... we. We're training for another race, and we said, well, we're going to do, we always want to do this challenge of a 24-hour race. And so uh, we got word from Kino, who I know has been a guest on your show. Right. Uh, he actually, he's still wearing that Thor costume. <laughs> no, so, you know, he kind of convinced us to do, he's always, he's, he raises money for a lot of good causes, and he convinced us, you know, well, this is a great opportunity for you to get into fundraising and also race. So um, we did the, signed up for the 20 and 24 race from back of my feet, and, you know, did a little bit of fundraising for them with that. And... Uh, we're headed out to the race on race day. We're in the van. Kino, actually, and our friends Rick in, is in the back. A couple other people are with us. We're driving down to the race, and we're getting... We had heard earlier in the day that it was going to be changed to a 12-hour race because of weather. Too we're hot. Like, well, let's go anyway. Why not, right? Okay. So, yeah, there was extreme heat and also threat of thunderstorms. It was kind of a mess of weather, but it happens this time of year, I guess. Um, okay. So we're driving, and, and they said the race is canceled. Oh. But we're, you know, we're halfway to Philadelphia at this point, and... Uh, uh, well, I, I guess we'll just, we might as, we already have the hotels paid for, we're already in the van, we might as well just go and have a, a vacation. But, you know, as we're going down there, every, everyone in the van is going, uh, they're going, oh man, I've been eating all week for this race, I, I feel like I have all this, I feel like so I gotta run something, I gotta do something. So, we're online, and I think Kino's on his, on his, uh, on his phone, like he always is, looking, <laughs> looking up for on the Marathon Maniacs webpage. I think looking up where, where are the where are some races that we can do this weekend. We found a race, a trail race out in uh, in Maryland somewhere, and uh, emailed the race director, or maybe even called the race director, and said like, "Hey, there's like ten of us that need a place that need a race this weekend, and we heard you're having one. Can you can you squeeze us in? We don't know. Is ready. We don't know if you're full. We don't know if it's like has it right, happened." Right, right. And he said. Wow, yeah, I heard about what happened. I heard the race got canceled. Come on down. We'll, we'll sign you up on race day. So cool. we, we got a bunch of people to go down to Maryland and run this 50K for... Uh, well, how was that for you? It was great. We had, we had a good time. It was, it was okay, great. your wife was there with you. Yeah, she was there with me. And actually, uh, another I didn't tell you this, uh, another former guest of yours, Barbara, was actually there with us. Barbara Malley? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And she, you know, she started traveling with us to, all over the, to a bunch of different races, and uh, she ran the, her first trail 10K. Oh, a, so cool. It was a good time, yeah. We, oh, cool. Well, was, this, sort of, this is mostly people from Nike Town? A lot of people that we've met at Nike Town, you know, through the people that, you know, we've met at Nike Town, we've met a lot of different people from Dashing Whippets and from other running clubs around the city, but it, it all kind of leads back to the Nike Town, the Nike Town people that we've met. All yeah. right. Now talk about Nike Town. All right. Something, Nike Town changes every three or four years. Yeah. I was there during this first iteration where we only had about 75 to 100 people. 
and uh, Coach Ramon, Coach Conlon. And I think Coach Kane was there, but I think he was on the west side. I was on the east side. Okay. We used to run five days a week, but I mostly ran on the east side. Kendley came in, the era of Kendley. <laughs> And she had great coaches. It's my favorite like era. <laughs> Coach Terrence, Coach Easemark. And they started, I believe, at that time, the marathon training up to this point. And then after Kenley, there was a transition to Coach uh, Jennifer. Yeah. And now so something has happened just a few days ago, maybe last week. Yeah. Which is a little bit confusing because it was a surprise. Tell us, what, ha what is going on with Nike Town? What are the plans of management at Nike Town? Yeah, you know, what they've been telling us is basically that there's going to be an RSVP system where they're going to announce, and, it, and it's kind of evolving. They've made some changes in the last couple of days, but what they've said is that there's going to be an RSVP system. They're going to announce the workouts on Sunday uh, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you need to go online through their, their, uh, through their website using your username, and you have to register and reserve your spot in the runs. There's going to be, a, I think, a, a training workout on Mondays. Uh, I don't think there's anything on Tuesdays now. There's going to be a track workout on Wednesdays. There's going to be a, the normal run on Thursdays, another like cross-training running day on Fridays, and then the long run on Saturdays. Um, so the idea is that you'll go online and you'll RSVP for these uh, events and reserve your spot and now they're combined in. into three stores because now they also have runs at the Upper East Side which is a relatively new store yeah and the Flatiron I believe yeah so last like I think last year or maybe two years ago they opened that Flatiron store which is a, a running only store and they started a separate running club out of out of that store and they also started a separate running club out of the Upper East Side store and the idea is to combine all three of those run clubs into one thing and have them all under that umbrella of that, uh, the registration cap. I think it already started, and I think the first time it sold out immediately, like every day of the week. Yeah, it was like a, like a concert. It's it's <laughs> or, or like the the Chicago Marathon two years ago, right? It, it sold out in 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 minutes. It's free, obviously. You know, sure, it's not yeah, sold it's out. free. Yeah, At Nike Town has always been free, so you show up. The, was that announced to the to the team? They were Announcements made, you know, in person at the runs that there's going to be some changes coming, but it was never, you know, really announced what it was going to be. So you found out about it online? Yeah, essentially through the, through the, the Facebook page that you're on. It right, was kind of announced, right, yeah. right, right. So uh, sign up in advance, either through their website or your smartphone, there's an app. The app is part of the program, from my understanding, but you still have to go to the website. You mean if you happen to have your phone as internet, you know, you can use it, but you have to go to the specific website right, right. to sign So up. what's the app that they talk about? What's that? Uh, so I, I don't actually don't use it. It's, it's the Nike running app, which, you know, that just lets you I, I use the GPS features. And I, some people use Map My Run or Strava. Right, right, right. There's a bunch of different, you know, tracking apps. It's just another sort of activity tracking app on your phone. Oh, okay. In our day, they had the, um, the iPod uh, Fuel band. Oh, yeah, yeah the, with the, the little the bean you yeah, put the thing I, in your shoe. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it would track your miles. And you go to, to the Nike Plus and put in your miles. Yeah, I mean, I use the GPS watch. I prefer that. I, I just, I don't like to run with my phone. I don't run with music. I don't yeah, carry yeah, yeah, my phone. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I wish I had my phone to take pictures. The only time I'm running with my phone is if I want to take pictures. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't find it useful. Okay. Okay. Well, I like. I don't know if they still have that because if you posted your miles. Yeah. And in fact, in those days, we would have contests across the country. You know, we would form a group, and this our group. We were going to run as many miles as we could in seven days. Yeah. And whoever won, you know, got bragging rights. Yeah, and you can do that through the phone, through the app, and through the phone. I think that that's one of the things that they're saying is, is a great feature of this, is that you can, you can do that and you have those challenges. Right. But I think that everyone's, uh, people's fear is that there's a, a huge focus on being able to do things like that. But, you know, one of the things that has made it so great and one of the things that kept us coming back is the fact that you're inspired by all these people that you meet that you would never have met otherwise uh, and, and I think that people want to be around other people and, and talk to you know their fellow runners about what are you doing what are you up to what are your tips I'm doing this before I'm nervous I don't know what to eat I don't know how much am I drinking am I drinking too much am I drinking too little all these little things that you have to have uh, somebody with you to, to get that and I think that people are afraid that they're gonna lose that I understand. Change is tough. Yeah. So, so before this change, you just showed up 
and uh, especially on Nike Town, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, yeah. show up and run. Now you have to RSVP in advance, so yeah. it is, uh, it's a whole different ball game. It, it is, yeah. It's 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 a scary ball game for a lot of people too, especially. Uh, you know, I mean, we're this is we're well into week 16 of marathon training for New York City, uh, either week 13 or 14 training for Chicago marathons. So, so with this happening right now, I think with the uncertainty, people are uh, kind of I think justifi yeah, justifiably freaking out a little bit. And I think they're they're doing away with the marathon training. I don't it, know if it's right away or it's not happening. It, yet. it seems like it's being phased out. You know, right now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and, and they, they're telling us that they're going to, they're listening to the feedback, that they're going to make some changes, that they're going to try to accommodate what, you know, what we're telling them and, and incorporate that. But, you know, it, it seems like it's on, it's on its way out as we know it. Hmm. Wow. But before we close out, what are some of your future challenges, be you and your wife together or separately? <laughs> yeah, so, so one of the big things is, you know, we try to do one, one race a year on our own and, and another race together. And so what she's... Her and uh, another former guest of yours, Stephen England, are, are going on this challenge for, it's called the Tahoe 200. And it's this 200 mile race uh, around the entire Tahoe Rim uh, Trail, plus another 40 miles, I think, because it's, the Tahoe Rim is only two, uh, 160 or something. Okay. Like so they're gonna go on this race. It's the first continuous 200 mile race in, uh, in America. And the challenge is to finish it in under 100 hours. Wow, knowing Stephen, he might make it. <laughs> I, I think knowing knowing both of them, they're they're definitely going to make it. <laughs> Don't know Lucy yet, but uh, but uh, but you have crewed for her in the past, I presume. I've, I've crewed for her in the past. Yeah, we, we've done we've done a lot of races together, and I've seen her. She's done five hundred mile races, and uh, I, I have no, are you going to be there to crew? I'm going to be there to crew. I'll probably pace, you know, hopefully a good thirty or forty miles of it. I'll definitely be driving a van and uh, filling up bottles of Gatorade and stuff. So. All right. Well, listen, on that note, I wish you great success in the Lake you. Tahoe 200 and everything else you, you do. Yeah, and hopefully I'll see you at the Nike Tower one way or the other. We'll be there. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you so Will. Much.